Hi, welcome to the channel. Today's video is about iOS accessibility features, voiceover, spoken content, how you customize that that makes it easier for someone with low vision, visually impaired, legally blind, dark blind folks even, that use voiceover, making it easier for them to understand simply by speeding it, the spoken voice up or slowing it down, changing the pitch, or maybe changing the voice altogether. And, and maybe, maybe, just quite maybe, you need to use a different language. Sound good? We're going to cover these and probably a few that you haven't heard about, especially for the newbies that are new to voiceover and some of the old hands that's been at it for years like myself. There's some things in here that's probably going to make you go, hmm, why don't I do that? Sound good? Just check it out. Here we go. Hey, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, you might want to consider subscribing. And by all means, please use the comment section to ask any questions or share any insights that you might have. In this video, introduction to spoken content on the iPhone and the iPad for that matter. Now, one, one of the things that uh, I want to make really clear is a lot of folks out there don't feel comfortable using voiceover for a number of reasons. We're going to go through some of the settings, how you can customize that to make it a little bit more comfortable for you. Experiencing some age-related vision loss. We don't need voiceover turned on all the time. Maybe not at all, but we can still use the uh, spoken content feature and we'll talk about that here a little bit later on as to how you can make that accessible and have it just a little button on your screen where you can just tap it touch it and they'll speak what's underneath your finger to kind of give you an idea what is on the screen be helpful more more on that when we talk about turning on and how to use spoken content we're going to talk about the speak selection feature we're going to discuss the uh, speak the screen feature, how to turn that on and off and what it does. We're going to talk about the, the speech controller. Now the speech controller is one that works both with or it, it will work with voiceover turned on or off. We'll go through that. We're also going to talk about and show you how to highlight the spoken content. So you, it has a little highlighted box and you can choose the color of that box that either highlights the word or the sentence that the spoken content is being read aloud or voiceover is reading. We're also going to talk about um, choosing you know, your default language and how that default language is spoken. You know, there's different kinds of English. There's American English, there's Australian English, there's UK English, there's different types of voices that you can select. And when we're talking about voices, you can also change or you can select different languages. If you're bilingual, you might want to select both those languages, or you may just want to turn on detect, you know, languages so that when it detects something being written in Spanish, for instance, it speaks that text in Spanish, German, Japanese, Chinese. There's a lot of different ones you can choose from. We'll talk about where you can find that and how you can make those adjustments to customize voiceover or spoken content so that it best suits your individual needs. Make sense? A lot of the items, low vision devices that I recommend and some other helpful videos that I believe you'll find useful. Links to that in the description down below. You might want to just check that out. And uh, by all means, please, if you enjoy this content, give us a thumbs up. Share it with a friend. And what well, do you say we just get into setting up, turning on, spoken content, and how all that functions. Sounds good? Here we go. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm just going to pick up my iPhone, and I'm going to try to do a screen recording and record voiceover and kind of work back and forth just for fun. Okay, scroll down. I've opened up the settings folder, or settings, and I'm going to scroll down until I get to accessibility. Bluetooth, on, cellular, button. Personal hotspot, notifications, sounds haptics, focus, but screen time, general, but control center, display brightness, home screen app light, accessibility button. 
when I get the accessibility folder, I'm going to go ahead and open that. One finger, double tap. Vision, heading. And as visually impaired person, I'm doing all this with voiceover turned on. I know a lot of guys out there, I have people that talk to me about age-related vision loss, and they don't want to mess with voiceover. One of the good things about the spoken content, you can turn that on and turn that off without having to ever have voiceover turned on. So, under accessibility, we're going to scroll down to spoken content. I'm going to open the spoken content folder. It's right there. Spoken content. On. And at the, the top one, the first thing that's on the menu is the spoken content. I'm going to turn that on. A speak button will appear when you select text. And it says something about a speak button will, you know, appear when you select text. Then the, the next one on the list is going to be... Speak screen. Switch button. On. Speak screen. Now, I use speak screen a lot because I'm a voiceover user. And I have the speech controller turned on. And there's what that page looks like. And basically with a speech controller, you're going to end up with a little icon that's on the screen. Expand speaking bar. Button. Expand speaking bar. So there's that speaking bar expanded. That's what that speech controller is all about. You turn that off and that little window is going to disappear. It's this one right here. Play button. The play button. And it'll play what's on the screen. Or when voiceover turned off, it acts a little bit differently. But with voiceover turned off, you can open this up, then touch the little thing, the little icon over it. It looks like a hand with a finger. And then whatever you touch, it will it will say what that is. Let me show you real quick here. I'm going to turn voiceover off. Alert. Accessibility selected. Vo voiceover off. So voiceover is off. I'm going to touch the little finger here. Then touch something. Basically what you do with voiceover turned off is you just tap that symbol there. It looks like a hand with a finger. And then you touch something on the screen and it'll read to you what that is. Wherever you touch to that. Okay, just a real quick illustration as to how the spoken content works with voiceover turned off. And with the speech controller activated, turned on, I have this little icon in the center of the right margin on my phone screen. I'm going to tap it with one finger, and it opens up this dialog box. Now from here... On the lower left-hand corner of that dialog box was the hand with the pointing finger. And it's only there for a bit until you use it. So let me try that again. I'm going to tap that. And now whatever I touch with my finger is going to read. iPhone storage. If I want to read something else. Background app refresh. So each time... You want to read a, an item, you have to select it, touch the finger, keyboard, and tap the information that you want to read. And that's all there is to it. This is how spoken content will work with voiceover turned off. I'm going to turn voiceover back on. And for those of you that are wondering, I've got mine set up where I've got the... Uh, Accessibility is easy to access, but I just triple click the side button here and it takes me to my shortcuts. That's what the screen looks like. So I can turn on, turn off, activate whatever from this screen. Are you visually impaired? Are you learning to overcome age related vision loss? Are you legal blind like me? Do you like voiceover? Do you think spoken content is something that you might find useful? Have any other questions? Please remember the comment section down below. If you'd rather, you can look for the Legally Blind Geek on YouTube and Instagram. Love to hear from you. So let's get back into this tutorial on spoken content, customizing voiceover, stuff like that, that makes it easier for a visually impaired person, regardless of their visual impairment, use and understand the iPhone accessibility features so that it works best for them. Here we go. Let's get back into it. Hey, just a quick thought I wanted to share with you. Folks are often asking, well, why doesn't this feature work on my phone? Or what do I need to do to get this to work for me? Well, if you are using, you know, one of the older iPhones, yes, some people are, or the 7s or the 6s or the 10s, 
it might be a good time to upgrade your hardware. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy the latest and greatest shiny object, but you want to find one that is a good price and a good deal. And I'll put some links in the description down below of what I think is a good deal that will function well for any and all these current accessibility features. But if you want the latest and greatest, by all means, go ahead. More importantly, you want to be able to have a device that's running the current the latest version of iOS because of all the security updates. And they do make a little tweak here and a little bit of a tweak there. And with the capabilities of some of the newer phones, like my 14 Pro Max is what I am using to illustrate this. And actually, I'm recording all this video on a 10s Max. So iPhones last a long time. They're a good deal. You don't have to have the latest and greatest. You can have one that's 10 years old and it'll still function. Just want to share that with you. But make sure you get, you're running the latest software that's available for your device. Make sense? My thoughts on the speech controller being turned on is a good thing, especially for folks that don't use voiceover a lot or for folks that do not like to increase the text size or bold the text to make it easier to read. You know, sometimes some of the different fonts are just difficult to see. And when they're really small, it makes it really hard to see for some people with, you know, normal vision. So as we age and we start getting that, you know, age related vision loss thing going on or ADM, things get a little bit blurry, but maybe not so much so that we want to rely on voiceover. So for those folks, having the uh, speech controller on so they can just tap that little button, tap the little finger, and then touch a, a section of text that they can't see otherwise and have it read to them would be a good idea. For me, as a visually impaired person, I rely on voiceover. And I use the uh, speech controller when I'm trying to do something and voiceover is driving me insane. Voiceover users out there, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it just rambles on and on and on, and you're just wanting to see what this is or what that is. You're using larger text, you're using bolder text, so you just tap it, touch the little finger, point to it, and it tells you what the heading is, and then you can choose to open it, close it, whatever, just like you would a phone that has voiceover turned off. Makes things a lot simpler. Make sense? So, having said that, moving right along to the next item on the list. Now, you can go into the section that says Highlight Content. You can turn that on, and then you're going to have choices, whether you want it just to highlight the word, or highlight the sentence, or highlight the word and the sentence. And basically what that does is it puts like a little colored box around it, highlighting where the voiceover or the spoken content reader is at in a particular section of text. Makes it easier to follow along for those that to pay attention to that kind of thing. So for everything else, for voices and uh, default languages and stuff like that, you, to customize voiceover in the way that the iPhone speaks to you, we're better off just going back to voiceover, opening up the voiceover folder and adjusting the speaking rate selecting the voice, selecting the rate of speech, selecting the pitch in that folder. Hope you've enjoyed this information. If you found it useful, please consider liking it and giving us a thumbs up, share it. You may want to consider subscribing. Check out the useful links we've got in the description box down below. Every little bit helps, right? You follow the affiliate links, you make a purchase, I get a small commission. That helps me to afford the stuff that goes into putting these videos together. You know, some of the stuff that I use all the time, it's kind of like, you know, TubeBuddy. I use TubeBuddy for my SEO, selecting titles, thumbnails, and all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in something like that, I've got a link in the description down below that'll help you get a free trial of TubeBuddy. Subscribe. Comment. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for your time. Make it a great day. Stay safe.